the first part you're going to need for the construction is some of this PEX tubing. Uh, I've used 20 mil PEX tubing, but it's entirely up to you. But what I suggest you do is if you take a torch with you to the DIY store, you can actually then verify that light will pass through the tubing okay. If it's PEX tubing, it's absolutely fine, but you don't want to be using uh, tubing that is designed for heating or anything like that because it tends to be too thick. We're also going to use some of these 20 mil PVC connectors. And the idea is that depending on how you set up, these will push on. Now, they do fit, but it's a real tough uh, fit. So what I suggest is you, you know, if you're struggling to put it in, you either put a bit of uh, washing up liquid to make it a little bit slippier or put it in some hot water to expand it slightly and then you can push them into place okay and once I show you the construction you'll realize why I have got a three-way the next item is just a 40 mil nuts and bolt and the idea is once you've applied this to the tube you can drill a hole through and then you can put the bolt through that will stop this popping out. Uh, the next item is some either some conduit. This is actually uh, stainless steel piping that's used for things like uh, taps, etc. Uh, but it's incredibly, it's incredibly strong. Uh, and that will form the base of uh, your arch now just to give you an idea although I've got an arch that's temporarily uh, temporary made I haven't actually sized the arches yet but you you can get an idea of how it will be laid out now you need to cut your three arches to size I have chosen a size of 2300 millimeters for the large arch 1800 mil for the medium arch and 1300 mil for the small arch. I have taken this measurement from the center line of the tubing. Now we take our metal tubing and cut it to 1300 millimeters. You'll notice the diameter of the tubing that I have chosen is 18 millimeters. This is actually slightly smaller than the 20 mil of these fittings, but there is a reason for that that I will cover later. When we finish preparing the metal bar, it will look like this. Okay, so we have a fitting here that's going to be the large arch. Then there's one for the medium arch and then one for the small arch. And if I pan out, you see that's duplicated on the other side. So the idea is that cabling will come up here into the LEDs and then it can pass out here uh, to whichever power source or uh, control device you're going to be using in, in my case a node MCU then these obviously just thread along the bar to allow the next arch to connect now the reason I went for putting these this way and a, a tri-way is for two reasons. I'm going to be mounting this arch onto a fence. So I'm going to have a bar also coming down here so I can fasten that to a fence. But it could also be useful for putting a bar and forming a spike for sticking the arch into the ground. So it has two purposes. Okay. Now the idea is for the wiring the wiring is going to come into here. It's going to pass the full length of the large arch. Then it will come through this pipe and you'll be drilling a hole in this pipe as well. So it can now go around the next arch, come back, a hole drilled into the metal bar. The wiring will come the internal of the bar and it can come down the middle arch. 
Now at the same time, we'll be injecting power into each arch. So each arch will get its own dedicated power. So that should cater, you know, for not uh, losing the color or, or losing the signal on the LEDs. Okay. Now, the problem you face with these green fittings is although they are 20 mil, if you notice there, they're only 20 mil down to a certain point. Now that's fine for the arch, you can push that into place. But what happens is when you try to fit these and push them through, even though these are only 18 mil, they still are too big. Now, that's not a problem. You just get a large drill, or I've, I've used a Dremel to sand, to bore this out. And that means you can then slide these into place. Now, these actually fit in quite solidly on their own, uh, just with an interference fit. They're quite solid, so they, it will actually hold together. But the reason for the screws, the bolts, is just really, once you pop these into place, these could have a tendency to, to pop out on a windy day or something like that. Obviously, you would then drill a hole straight through here. This would pass through, and this will hold the arch into place. Now, obviously, there'll still be enough space in the gap here for the cabling to pass through, so not a problem. You also have the option, if you so wish, if you really want to, you could put a, a bolt here and here as well to actually hold, to stop this sliding. Uh, I'm going to evaluate that as I build this. So far, it seems to be fairly solidly in place. Uh, just make sure when you bore the inside, you keep it to uh, you know a bare minimum, and then you can really push it on, on tight and it will hold into place. Now, the measurements I have gone through from this end point to each arch is, if we look here, it is 35 centimeters between those two arches, from the large to the small, and actually 17 and a half between them. So effectively, these two, or these are all equidistant apart and you can see I've done the same there. So now we have the joints in position. The next step is to drill the hole into the tubing at these points that will allow the cabling to pass through there into the tube to pass to the next arch. So as you can see, we have the holes cut for the cable to pass through. And the idea is once this is pushed into place, you can see there is a place for the cable to pass through. Now what I suggest you do is use a rubber grommet in these holes because it can be quite sharp and it could cut your cables. Uh, as a stopgap, I'm just going to be using some insulating tape to protect the cables against these sharp edges. So if you don't have a, a grommet, if you just put a, a piece of insulating tape in a cross over the hole and then what you can do you can just make a, a cross into that and then you can just with a tool just push it around and that should be enough to just get rid of these sharp edges this also has the added of benefit that when we push this back into place, it causes a, an interference fit. So you may not even need a screw or anything to hold this in place. It will probably just be tight enough. So this is the base bar now, fully prepped, ready to have the arches put in place. And as I suspected, the insulation tape in there, and also I used insulation tape around here, was enough to cause an interference fit that there's no need for any bolts in here if you don't if you don't need them you can see it's all pretty pretty solid so here is one of the units ready to be populated with the LED strips 
you can see now that some bolts have been passed through to prevent these from popping out of the fitting so we've got these bolts holding them in place you don't need bolts here you've got an interference fit so this is quite solid on this bar uh, and obviously as we know as, you, as I covered earlier we've got holes here to allow all the wiring to go along the bar into the LEDs now unfortunately I'm still waiting for my delivery from China of my LEDs and my node MCU so all of the fitting of the LEDs and configuration of the software will be covered in part two.